Hi guys and welcome to uh, the YouTube channel of uh, the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. I'm uh, Dr. Kimon Beckel is joined by Dr. Javad Ahmad and uh, Jason Wallen. Uh, we wanted to make this video to address a topic that comes up a lot in conversation. We got a lot of messages about that and that has to do with um, how do you get training in neurology, neurosurgery, all the neuroscience fields. Um, it's a very competitive area and uh, a lot of you guys are asking so we thought we'd make a video and talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, we are very blessed and fortunate to have a neurosurgeon and a neurologist that we can kind of hear about your past to where you got. Um, you know, you guys are some at the top of your field, um, you know, brain, literally. Uh, so, uh, you know, why don't you give us those insights? That's what my mom says. But uh, um, yeah, so, you know, maybe maybe we start with neurology. Um, Javad, so so how, how do you how do you get into a neurology residency? How difficult is it to get a residency? and what do you need to do leading up to it? And then when you're in it, what are the things you need to do to set yourself up for a career down the line in the appropriate fellowship and everything yeah, else? Yeah. I think I think the important question, as you hit the nail on the head, is what, what do you need to do to get into a residency, right? right. It all depends upon going to medical school, going to an undergrad or going to medical school, right. and then somehow making into neurology residency, right, at the end of the day, right? Um, so it does help. There's a few things that help someone get into a neurology residency, and I'm sure even more so in a neurosurgery residency. Right. Definitely. And not only your grades, not only uh, not only about your 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 assembly scores, but also um, extra work that you do. You know, extra work meaning any type of publications that you've done. Uh, that's being number one. Number mm. two being ec any externships that you've done as well. So we have, we may, I think you may have some overseas uh, right. uh, subscribers yeah, as well, of right? So I think that's that's vital to have some type of externships that you can have at different hospitals in the states that will give you that kind of leg up that someone needs to get into a neurology residency. Mm -hmm. uh, that that that's 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 important. And again, like I said, publications. If you can kind of latch yourself on to a neurosurgeon or to right. a neurologist, where they can kind of help you and they can you can help them to uh, you know attain information to write publications. That that's how our field grows. You know, our field grows through these publications. Right, and right. Dr. Beckless is. One that has written many publications, but well, that, that uh, was he, that was my way in neurosurgery residency, right? So that's yeah. a good point. So there's, I think there is um, three components that are very important. That if you master all three, you will have a significant advantages compared to anybody else. One is obviously your test scores, right? Those unfortunately are very important and vital. But the the unfortunate aspect of that is that most people will will score very highly on these tests because you know. The, you guys are all very competitive, you work hard, uh, and you're very smart, and eventually there, there is a limit to that. And, and a lot of folks score very highly there. But then what's gonna set you apart from the other people that scored very highly? And what that is, is two possible things. One is research and publications like, like Dr. Ahmad said. So you know you need to publish. You have to find yourself a mentor, get close to them, and then keep publishing with them. The more proactive and productive you are, the more they will support you in this whole process. And the third component is letters of recommendation. Letters of recommendation are key. People want to hear from their colleagues that this person they're bringing on into their program, either a seven-year program, which is neurosurgery. How many years is neurology? Basic training? Three, three years, one year intro internships. Three. So four, four years. So, so four or seven years, this is a big commitment. You, you know, these attendings will work with you for a very long time. You know, four or seven years is a significant amount of time in, in somebody's career. And so they want to make sure that the person they're going to be working with, somebody has vouched for. Somebody has worked with them before and they, they, they vouched for them. And so if you're coming from overseas and you're trying to get a residency in neurology or neurosurgery, for example, that's very tough, right? Because they don't know uh, the folks you might be working with in your country. And so coming to the U.S. and doing externships, sub-internships, like, like Dr. Ahmad mentioned, those will actually give you the opportunity to work with local neurosurgeons, then they'll write letters of recommendation, and those, in combination with your publications, your high test scores, they will give you the, 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 uh, the advantage over other people. I think, I think these three things, if you do them, uh, there is almost uh, a guarantee that you will be in a very good spot and a very high possibility to, to match in neurology or neurosurgery. I think uh, something else I can add maybe. Yeah? Tricky, but it would be very, very crucial if you can find a find a mentor that 
that has is, is in an academic institution or institution with that neurology program or that neurosurgery program. Right. Imagine that. That's having, that's that's the best case scenario. So if you're targeting, say, scenario. a program, right? Yeah, I want to work in program X. You work with the people there. You're part of the team, so it's not very difficult for them to get you uh, uh, and rank you highly and get you in that uh, in that team. And when it comes, another thing is when you when it comes to sub internships, a lot of people, you know, they're reading books about what should I do and you know how do I behave as I'm a medical student. I don't really know what to do. I, I don't really contribute much. Well, that's not true. You do contribute. Um, having the um, the willingness to work and do things is 90% of the battle when it comes to sub-internships. Be available. Of course, they don't expect that you're a trained physician, but you're there to learn. You're not there to be in their way. You're not there to delay them. So, you know, your way of learning should be organic. It should not be demanding. If you're demanding their time, they're not going to be appreciative of it. Uh, it needs to be a situation where you're there as a value added. And of course, any opportunity that there is for you to shine, shine. So be ready, be well read on the subjects, right? And don't um, don't expect that they'll take you by the hand and educate you. Healthcare these days is very demanding, very fast paced. And, um, you know, unless unless you're going with the flow, it's not going to work out. So be passionate, not a pest. Correct. Be passionate. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. And we've all have, have had experiences with medical students that really don't necessarily get that concept of, you know, everybody's very busy. They're, you know, everybody's time is extremely precious. And so if if you're kind of becoming a problem, you're not, they're not going to appreciate it. Time is precious. Our field is super stressful, right? right? So exactly. Be a benefit to the team. So that being said, because you guys both mentioned having a mentor is so important. Right. How do you find your mentors? Is there like a Tinder for mentors? Or like, what are we there is about? not. Uh, <laughs> you know, actually, that might be a great idea to create a, an app for mentors. Um, so national organizations in neurology, uh, in neurosurgery, I'm sure in neurology also have tried to create a, a program to match mentors to mentees, but that has really not taken off, at least in neurosurgery, mainly because, again, people are very busy. Mm -hmm. And so the way you do it, you got to put in the work. Nothing comes without work. And so what is your area of interest, right? Nor say neurosurgery. I find folks, I find, first of all, I find an, a, a program that I think is worthy of um, national recognition. These are the people that are going to boost you to another residency program or keep you in the same program. And then when you go there, there's always multiple attendings. There's always somebody who's willing to mentor you and train you. Not everybody is at the same stage in their career. Some are later on. They're busy with other things. They're busy with research. But you will find the person, latch on to that person. They are looking for you and you're looking for them. Um, and that's the only way to do it. Yeah, I mean, there's different resources if you're, if you're talking about the semantics of it, right? The resources of, like, just like Dr. Beckless said, you can go to these national organizations. You can try uh, introducing yourself to attendings there, neurologists, attendings there. But you also have to just research the programs. At the end right. of the day, you have to go on the websites. You have to right. go on the websites, research who the, who the program director is, research the different attendings there, see which ones take on internships and externships. You know, there's a, there's specific hospitals that take on a lot of pay, a lot of students for externships. So right, right. Research must be done. And you know, I think everybody has these forums. Uh, like there's forums out there where you know people write about where I've done my externship here. Right. You should right. go here. Now, I'm sure there's Facebook forums as well. But, right. uh, and FaceTime is important. Get in front of these people. Physically go to the programs. Do not expect that, um, you know, by, by remotely communicating with the programs, you'll get anywhere. You have to be there. They have to see you live and functioning. And, you know, a lot of these principles that are super important to get into residency are also very important to get into a fellowship once you're in residency, right? In residency, you're a resident, there's multiple different attendings. Some will want to mentor you, some will not want to mentor you, some will want to educate, some will not. Some have connections that get you the fellowship you want, some do not. And so these principles that will get you into residency will get you into a fellowship. And, and you know, fellowships for neurology and neurosurgery are even more competitive than getting into the original residency, right? Because then the, the pool becomes even smaller. Uh, and it's, you know, in the field we live in, uh, and in the world we live in, subspecialization is where it's at. You know, you want to be extremely good in in one particular um, area, and this is this is exactly what we're talking about, right? Neurology. How many different oh, fellowships are absolutely. there? Absolutely, like twenty fellowships, right? Right. So, 
But imagine that. I think the most important thing is what you said is that not many people talk about it. And I think this is a, a good point. And this is a pearl for people. It's about the connections you make. Right. And the connections you make start in medical school, externship, residency. These connections start then. Then people know, like, all right, this person's motivated. This person's passionate. He's not a pest. Right. But he's willing to work with us, and we're willing to work with them. Right. If right. you show us that type, of, that type of commitment. Right. There's nothing that we won't do for you. you know? Right. Right. And, and as they say in business, right, your network is your net worth. Yeah. And the same thing applies to, like you said, it's your connections in a good way. You know, people know you. They know you're reliable. They know you're good at what you do. They'll go the extra mile. They'll push you through. And that's that's the beauty of the United States, that you get that ability to push people through if they're worth it. Right, you got to put the work in. There's no sorting hat to get in the different doors. Exactly. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Uh, but, yeah, so, so all in all, I would say, you know, the biggest message is do three things. Do well on the things that can be measured, which is your test scores. Um, do some research and publications as much as you can, of course. And then find a mentor, uh, do sub internships, get letters of recommendations, and you'll be better than 90% of the other applicants heading into this. Absolutely. And I think the, the point you made as well, the fourth thing I would say, is have that personality. Have that certain personality right. where you're right. not a pest, where you're working hard. That is important. That, that Once you're in the hospital and your foot's in the door, that's what people see. The nurses right. see that, the attendings see that, people, people see that. Oh, right. And, and good point before we close. Everybody matters when you're in the sub-internships. Like, like Dr. Ahmad said, the nurses, uh, everybody in the hospital, not just the physicians. So don't, don't be a team player with the physicians and be rude to everybody else. Because you know what? These are people that work with that physician on a daily basis. They make his life easier or harder. And the first thing they'll do is talk to him about you. And if they like what you do for them, you will get, again, the benefit of that. This is giving a cheat sheet over here. Oh, yeah, look at exactly. this. Exactly. Hope you're taking notes. I know. <laughs> Everyone's taking notes there. Something so, that I never knew. I never. I mean, you know, you, you yeah. learned. We learned it the hard way. The hard we learned way. it so on you the field. Just rude to everybody. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Still am probably. Nah. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in another video. Take care.